Hello everyone and welcome to Let's Play Doom. This time we're on uh, the Spawning Vats, Episode 7 of Mission 2. Um, this is the largest level in the Doom P Wad. I believe that's, I actually had to take a look, I think it's 178 kilobytes, which for then, I mean, it's pretty big. This is all just loading, you know, vertices information and sector information on IDEV, so it's really compressed data. Um, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to immediately get the hell out of here. Just to show you why, I'm going to try to do something stupid. So let's see what we can do here. Alright. There's a hell of a lot of enemies around here. And it may not be a good idea to run immediately. Uh, there's some health back here. Um, actually, I thought we were going to have to run, but I guess not. Just go ahead and take care of those guys. There's a lot of enemies in this level. Well, only 95, but the thing is, is this level is exceedingly big and exceedingly easy to get lost in. Um, and the data in this level is simply because there's a lot of line devs and a lot of vertices, uh, which you'll see soon. Because there's a lot of steps and a lot of curved walls, polygons, and things like this. And, uh, yeah, uh, the thing that's going to take up the most data in a, um, in a PWAD, a PWAD is going to consist, obviously, of the line defs and vertices and all of that good stuff, but it's also going to uh, uh, consist of a thing called a binary source, source partition table, which basically just, uh, make sure I'm alone here, basically just takes the level and ray traces all of the points that you can see and can't see, so you actually can see, uh, like, like this, for example, it would ray trace this area and say, you can see here, you can see here, you can't see past that, you can't see past that, and this guy startled me, but that's okay. Um, you know, but, but that's basically what it does. And a binary source partition table, actually, I remember my old 46, it took forever to do that thing. Um, this was a lot of data to run through, and it would basically build out a binary source partition tree. There's a really good couple of articles on Wikipedia, well, the Doom Wiki, where you can just look up a BSB table or B binary source partition tree for um, a level. And, you know, I think a good a bit of the data was for that, too. So if you build the data with a level with a lot of line defs and things like that, a lot of uh, intricate sectors and a lot of things you can and can't see, steps and things like that, we'll get the hell out of here. Seriously, game? Seriously, game? Okay. How many demons are there? gonna have a barbecue with all these guys. Anyways, hopefully everybody's doing pretty well. Uh, I have an interesting update. The uh, first video that I put out um, got way more traffic. The first uh, for the episode, uh, Knee Deep in the Dead, the hangar, got more traffic than I anticipated it getting. And uh, it's pretty cool, but the rest of the videos just kind of started trickling in. I think what's gonna happen is as we get over, as we increase uh, and uh, levels, we're going to see more and more and more traffic maybe coming in. But that was kind of a cool thing. Um, doesn't mean this is famous by any means. There are people out there. I did some searches on YouTube. There are people that have done uh, this game and have gotten millions of hits and all that fun stuff. But uh, you know what? Whatever. I'm going to do this Let's Play the way I want to do it. And I'm going to be myself. And that's the way it is. So let's look around here. Um, this Berserker, I'm going to hold off, and that, that thing right there, I didn't even mention it, make sure I don't get it, is an invul invulnerability sphere. I think it gives you invulnerability for about 30 seconds, which we may be able to use and we may not be able to use, but I'm going to hold off on that for now. And the thing about that is it absolutely inverts the screen. And you know what? Let's test this bad boy out, because I really want to go against these guys with a chainsaw. Hopefully I can do this. I saved it. Ah, let's see if I can get up here. Okay, let's go it. Go go after it. I'm gonna have fun. I'm gonna have fun with these guys. Okay, where are you? Watch this. Can't do jack shit to me. Chainsaw. 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 And it gives you about 30 seconds worth, which was enough to take care of all his enemies. Uh, that was pretty cool. So, 
I'm sure there's more enemies around here somewhere. I definitely want to get the blue key card, but I'm pretty sure once I open this up. Hey, look, nothing happened. Okay, well, that's pretty cool. There may be another invulnerability sphere around here somewhere, but I am not going to worry about that. Uh, once I saw those two Kakademons in the Baron of Hell, I was just like, screw it. I'm not even going to attempt. But you have to be really quick at that. I use the chainsaw because I can get close contact. And it kind of looks like there's a little turret up there, but it's really just a bunch of M's. Get rid of those guys. There we go. Yeah, and there's some cells. It's going to be really useful. And I think there may be some more enemies up there. Nope, I'm not going to get those little right now. But yeah, I think we're not going to worry about those yet. I, I can hear them. I can hear them. But I don't know where they are. And we're at 35 and 95, which means we've got 60 more enemies left. Hopefully they'll be pretty easy, but I'm pretty sure there's going to be some more barons of hell. Aha! You think you can get me? You think you can get me? Come on, there you go. But yeah, it was pretty cool seeing all that traffic uh, coming to my first video. Which is about 1,100 hits. Which is pretty good, but, you know, I don't think everybody was really that interested into it where it was posted. It was posted I am bored, and I gotta thank somebody for that, and I did. So it was pretty cool. Um, I may try a couple other sites to see if anybody's interested. And I really don't know why they put this there, but I'm gonna have to get it anyways. This invisibility sphere. Uh, but that's another reason why this level's so big. Look at how many uh, binary source partitions you're gonna, have to have, you're gonna have to have with those kind of steps way the level was designed but it's a really cool level i think it's one of my favorite levels it's not my my ultimate favorite level but it's up there and there's a there's a section here that we could probably get to um let's see where we're gonna go next is there any way we can go here um we could have possibly gone that way i'm gonna attempt it i've got the invisibility sphere no, I can't really go that way. That's right. Let's go back this way. But yeah, um, you know, it'd be nice if this video, these videos got some traffic. Oh, if only because I'd like to expand the knowledge of this game out a little bit. Um, that's my main reason. Because there's a lot of cool stuff here and I'd like to be able to contribute and give a little bit of respect to the developers of this game. Because, I mean, really it was, um, I mean, it was just groundbreaking. And I mentioned that... Um, Alright, come on. What am I doing? What am I doing? I don't know if anybody's ever seen the state. Ah, I, I don't know why I did that. That was just really funny. Um, I'm at 40% health. I can take on these guys. I got the blue key card. I really could have done that. Let me save it. There's plenty of other medikits around here. Well, this is pretty cool. Look at the lighting. There's actually a level, the second level in the first episode, had a really cool lighting effect um, based on the sectors, but um, I'm not really interested in showing that off right now. I said I'd mention the design. I may come back and show that later. Ah! Damn it! Rockets would be good. Ah, rockets, rockets. That's not a rocket, stupid. I'm going to save it because I'm down to 17% health. I'm going to spam the hell out of this guy. He has another... See, there's an invisible... I'm going to get this thing, probably. I'd like to avoid getting that, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that for right now. You can't go this way? All right, um, I missed the key there, and I know there's going to be some enemies down here, and I really wish I had a light that's a secret right here. I may be dead if I go down through here, because there's no light whatsoever. But there's some health, and I'm down to 18% health. This is getting really ballsy, but armor, armor's good. Okay, there's that. Some health, chainsaw. That's pretty good. We've got three out of six secrets, which isn't bad. This whole secret, this whole area is a secret. So that's pretty cool. But I don't know why. It's not really that much of a secret because, I mean, you'd see this. 
you know. So I don't want to get this invulnerability sphere yet, but I just did. Screw it. You know what? If I run into any enemies, I run into any enemies. So. Yeah. Totally, everybody's doing pretty well. Um, that's one good thing is it it basically shoots the light at two two. Uh, it, it basically shoots the light to two twenty five, I believe, and then it puts an inversion palette on everything, which just pretty much negates the values or inverses the values, so you get an inverse effect. Um, but it's all white and black, black and white too. So basically, it's not a full inverse. It basically just takes the palette, puts the black and white palette up, and then. Um, takes an inverse color of that. And that's an easy thing to do in programming. It's very easy, especially when you've got an RGP color scheme. RGB color scheme. It's pretty easy to inverse the colors or convert it to black and white because black and white really is just going to take the RGB value, take a luminosity, and just convert it to black and white. Or just take a uh, a palette, take it to a monochrome 256 color palette, which you can do because you can do uh, many colors of uh, 256 colors of, of black or white or whatever. It's monochrome, and then you take the palette, and then, um, I don't know what I was talking about. But it's something like that. You can just take a inverse black and white palette. Easy to do. Um, okay, let me see what I'm going to do. God, I can't move my damn thing. See, the thing is, is I get screwed up, and I'm not looking at the keyboard. I'm a touch typer. But I don't look at the keyboard, and then I screw up because I hit the wrong button. And there's no uh, dot there in the WASDs. I'd have to look at the F and then move over. So that's not really good. Um, oh, come on. I hear a door. I hear a door. I know it. I know it's around here somewhere. So. Come on. I hear a whole bunch of you guys. And I don't have the yellow key card yet. I hear a door. Where are you? I can't get the yellow key card yet. I think the yellow key card you have to access probably from this direction or the blue key card. I've got all maps, so I'm not really too worried about that. Oh, this is another cool design thing. Look, they've got the texture here. This is a texture, I believe, it's called P-Wad. This is a texture that I want. They called Sean for whatever reason. I don't know why, but when I was first developing levels, I really liked that metal texture. Then I realized it kind of wrapped. You can see it kind of wrapping there, and it looks really awful when you use it on anything more than 128 pixels high. And that's kind of cool too. And I used to think that all the textures needed to be 128 pixels high, and then they weren't. Um, you know, and all my levels were like that. Then I actually played through the levels, and then I realized that some of the levels are actually. Uh, where'd you come from? But some of the levels use various heights from, besides 128. You have to use that. So it's kind of funny that most of my heights were 128 in my early levels. Where is this? I can hear him coming in from somewhere. There's a teleporter. I can hear him teleporting. I'm getting close. I wish I could telefrag them. Let's see if I can telefrag. No, I can't telefrag. Yeah, a telefrag. See that? See what happens? Is I was able to demonstrate that. It's pretty cool. I have to make a note about that. Uh, telefragging means that um, you teleport in an exact same spot where a monster is, and uh, it will make them explode. So I was able to explore telefragging. So that's pretty cool. And that is really stupid. I'm down to three percent health, but I'm going to save it anyways because um, I can't go that way. And I need some health badly. 73 and 95. Maybe there's some health around here somewhere. I know you guys are probably yelling at me. There's health over here. But I'll find it. I'll find it. I'll survive. What I'm going to have to do is just make sure that I don't do anything really, really, really stupid. It would be nice if it went back to that area that with the Baron of Hell. Yeah. If I don't run into any enemies while I'm doing this, there's an area here that I didn't look at. 
There's a secret here that I can't really get to right now, but I'm not worried about that right now. I need the health, so. You can see this was a very big level. So I'm going to go ahead and do is, ah, if I didn't get the Berserker. Which I don't think I did. Because I went that way, and I went that way. Aha, great. 100% health. And that would have probably helped when I was, um, with the um, invulnerability sphere that could have probably helped. So let's go back this way. And let's go back this way and back this way. And that was a spot up there that I really couldn't get to. So I'm going to have to go is over here. Okay, this is going to open up a whole other area, but what I'm going to go ahead and do is save. And on the next uh, episode, uh, let's play Doom. We're going to go through the spawning beds. So thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.